in today's show. I'm looking at the waiver wire for fantasy basketball players you can add, players you can drop, Michael Bolton's you can listen to. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen. Every day we are free and we are available on all platforms. We're going to talk waiver wire. So we're going to look at players to add. We're going to look at players you can drop. We're going to look at upside grabs. We're just going to talk a bunch of stuff of guys that may or may not be available in your league. So let's uh, crack in right now and start off by looking at the most added players over the last day or so. And we start in Charlotte where there are a number of guys out with the COVID protocols. Lamelo Ball, Terry Rozier, Mason Plumlee, Jalen McDaniels. So there's a bunch of Hornets on this list. I probably, if I was a smart person, I would have just grouped those guys together. But Cody Martin, who was ill and he is now back, he is going to have, and he was already playing, took 22 minutes a night and being a really nice steel streamer. But there's a chance that his minutes go up as they most likely put Cali Oubre Jr. into the starting lineup. So yeah, Martin might play 30 a night coming off the bench. You've got Ish Smith, who will likely be the starting point guard and might contribute 10 points, 7 assists, 1.5 steals. Bad field goal percentage, but yeah, still enough value in him. These are guys that are solid enough 12-team league ads. If Kelly Oubre is available, and he's one of the most added players on Yahoo, so he was available. I don't think Oubre is a great long-term guy, but once as soon as there is injuries, he steps into a larger role. You do always have to watch his field goal percentage, but for this week, there's a lot to like about what Kelly Oubre could do. So there are a bunch of the players who have been added in a lot of spots. Now, yesterday I did the week eight preview and a lot of people asked me, hey, why aren't you mentioning Garrison Matthews as a stream option? Or maybe that was on the what, uh, the, uh, what to Watch For show where I did the streaming for Sunday. That's because using our advanced roster percentage metric on Basketball Monster, he was already rostered in like a ton of leagues, Garrison Matthews, in like 75% of leagues or something like that. So to me, in the vast majority of competitive leagues, he was already rostered. But going on the back of what people have said, he's not. So add him, yeah. Look, there's no Jalen Green. There's no Kevin Porter. So Garrison Matthews is an ad over Armani Brooks. He's a solid 12-team league guy. He's going to jack up a ton of shots. He hits them. All right, he's really good three-point shooter. doesn't offer much more than that, but he is a strong ad as well. In Atlanta, there's a bunch of guys injured. Bogdanovich, Hunter, Reddish is now hurt. You've got Hurt is questionable. Trey Young is questionable as well. So the Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! His minutes have gone up. He's playing high 20s now. That makes him a 12-team league guy in the short term. For the Lakers, Malik Monk, I really like what he's doing. He's doing way more than Talon Horton Tucker at the moment. Um, They're not starting him, but he's significantly better than Avery Bradley, who came back from his thumb injury, and what a shock, didn't play at all. Just that was subtle, or maybe he wasn't ready. Nah, he's just shit out, uh, Frank. And I'm... uh, Frank, but... Mate, if Frank Vogel survives this season and coaches the Lakers next year, they must have had a pretty significant turnaround. I reckon he's made some horrendous decisions with a horrendous roster, let's be fair. But he's made some bad bad choices. That is a complete tangent. Let's talk more about Malik Monk. With all the injuries, I think there is a chance that Monk is a better player than Kendrick Nunn. Anyway, you know I don't rate Kendrick Nunn very highly. Um, And there is potentially 30 minutes here a night for Monk. He's worth worth a crack. Old Basmati himself, Royce O'Neal. Royce has been added a lot. I'm guessing this is because of the game on Sunday. Uh, the Jazz play with low volume, so you stream him in. He is the absolute elite streaming option out there who is just going to be ranked between like 110th and 135th all year. And 110th is not bad. Like it's solid enough. His minutes are good. He's he's not going to excel in any category, but he can be a solid contributor as maybe your 11th best guy. He probably should be on a 12-team roster, but when you're looking to drop someone, I don't have any hesitation in moving on from him. I think that's how the best way to view him is. Eric Gordon, not particularly good, but 
again, with injuries in that backcourt, he's going to have opportunities, maybe some more assists, some more scoring. Good chance there. And then a couple of Pelicans blokes. Herbalife Jones, really like what I'm seeing. Now, I do think that out of all of the starters, he is probably going to be the one that hurts when, if Zion Williamson returns. But we don't know when that is. So Herb, with his steals, he's improving his scoring. He's at least a 14-team league guy. He might even be a 12-team league option. And a lot of people have added Billy Hernan Gomez. You know my thoughts on that. Absolutely, if you want to look at it as a streaming option, um, on a low volume day like today, sure, add Billy Hernan Gomez. But if Valanciunas isn't hurt or in foul trouble or the game isn't a blowout, then he's going to play 14 to 16 minutes and he's going to have seven and four. And that's shit house. Right? But there will be nights where if he plays 23 minutes a night, 12 and 10, no problem. He can do that. But I think what we always have to look at is people will look at those numbers and go, well, that's great. Like he just He just needs 23 minutes. He does, but he's not good enough to play those minutes. And when Valanciunas, when the team was playing and they're winning, Valanciunas plays 33 minutes and Hernan Gomez scrapes the bottom of the barrel. Like he's not a guy where you have to go, well, we've really got to limit what Jonas does because we need Billy out there. No, no, no. That's, that's, it's much like the Andre Drummond situation. Well, all Andre Drummond needs is 21 minutes. That's cool. You're going to play and be 27 so you can play Drummond more to those minutes? Like, no. And obviously Valanciunas isn't on the Embiid level. But to be honest, Hernan Gomez isn't on the Drummond level. So yeah, this is a long way of saying streaming for today. But under no circumstances, Bill Hernan Gomez, a 12-team league hold player. Maybe, probably not even a 14-team league hold player. And that's a, a lot of uh, words on Billy Hernan Gomez. But the amount of times I've had in questions asked, and now he's reappearing on the most added list, uh, I think it is important for me to... um. Important for me to mention that. It's also important for me to mention that Price Picks is the best daily daily fantasy prop provider out there. You're gonna love it. It is daily fantasy the way it is meant to be. If you truly believe in the over under of Billy Hernan Gomez's points or rebounds prop, then throw it into a lineup. Simple as that. Because it's not just the starters you can use on Price Picks. Even the bench scrub. Shout out to Billy. You can use those guys and put them in for their minutes. What you do is you get four to five players. Find their over-under props, whether it's points or assists or steals or blocks or rebounds or whatever. Choose the over-under, stick them together, and you can win up to 10 times your entry fee. When you sign up, if you use the promo code MBA, you can get a 100% match deposit bonus up to $100. Entries are fast, under 60 seconds. Withdrawals are safe and easy. So head to pricepicks.com or download their award-winning app. Use that code NBA and you get yourself that deposit bonus and you're ready to win. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. If you are like me and can't wait to go and watch Billy Hernan Gomez, you watch your live sports on one thing. Like this, this is my Billy Hernan Gomez TV. All right, then you've got your shows that you watch somewhere else. Then you've got your highlights that you watch on your phone. And then you've got to go borrow Billy Hernan Gomez's brother's one shows, sister's cousin's gardener's niece's nurse, their login to go watch the other stuff. That sentence was as confusing as it is to try and find where to watch your programs. Well, I'll tell you a better way to finally get all that entertainment you love in one place and get your TV together. It is called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. No more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can find out more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. The next package we're going to talk about is the package of droppable players. Again, let's there's always people who are going to be new to the show. Let's throw this out there. What is a droppable player? It is a guy that you can consider dropping. You don't have to go and drop this guy, and it might not make sense to drop them, but in certain situations they can be guys that you can give the ass to. I think Maxi Kleber's got a real chance at 12-team league value this year. But I also think that if you want to go and grab someone else, if you need to stream someone in, then he can go. Will he consistently get 31 minutes a night? Probably not. He played 31 last game with Porzingis out. If I was Jason Kidd, I would do a lot of things differently. But if I was Jason Kidd, I'd just be playing Porzingis and Kleber 33 minutes a night each. And then you know, your Willie Cauley-Steins and Dwight Powers would be just cleaning up the messes behind them. But I'm not Jason Kidd, thankfully or maybe unthankfully because of his money, but I don't have that choice. So if Kleber plays 27, it's not worth it. So you can move on. Although I do think he's going to be in and out of lineups. Uh, speaking of in and out of lineups, Eric Bledsoe has moved to the bench. He's playing a limited role as a backup point guard. You can get rid of him. In fact, Jack Armstrong, he's knocking. He, he wants to say something. Get that garbage out of here! 
Now, Ty Lu deserves credit for a lot of things he does. I think that his lineups at the moment are horrendous. Um, he is playing three blokes out of position at the moment. Starting Serge Barker at the four. Serge Barker's a five. Starting Marcus Morris at the three. Marcus Morris is a four or even a five. And then starting Paul George at the two. George is a three and four. You're just throwing guys into completely terrible positions. So I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why he's doing it. You have perfectly good two guards you can throw out there. Luke Kennard can start. Terrence Mann can start. Holy shit. I would even consider starting BJ Boston and putting Serge Barker on the bench. There's a lot of things they could do, but they're doing the wrong one. Um, and Bledsoe can go. That's just a long bow for me to have a criticism of Ty Lue for those lineups. Eric Bledsoe can get dropped. Uh, Grayson Allen's a pretty clear drop. He was out last game anyway. Uh, he's been a drop for weeks, but I'm just mentioning it because he's still rostered in a lot of leagues. Otto Porter Jr. <sighs> Look, he rested last game. He's been playing okay, but again, this is without Andre Iguodala. It was without Damian Lee. You're going to have Clay Thompson coming back. Porter is fine to grab. And to use occasionally. But again, when we're looking at who's the hot free agent, do I want to try Ish Smith or Cody Martin? I think get rid of him. He's not worth holding. This is where we get a little bit more controversial, I think. I do not believe in Keldon Johnson as a 12-team league fantasy player. I don't know how many more times I need to say this. Well, not, no, that's not true because that sounds like I'm demanding you do shit. Do whatever you want. I don't care. But Keldon Johnson's not a good fantasy player in for category leagues. Points leagues, yes, he is a 12-team hold. Category leagues... Keldon Johnson is the 148th ranked player this year. He's playing 30... Are his minutes going to change? No. Is his usage going to change? I doubt it. Is he all of a sudden going to start bringing other numbers? Assists? No. Steals? No. Blocks? No. Be efficient from the field or from the line? Probably not. Hit volume threes? I doubt it. His three-point shooting is great, but he takes none of them. He is just the guy that on the surface, if you look at it when he scores points, you go, wow. 15 points, man, that's fantastic. 16, what a great fantasy player. And then he does nothing else. So in a category league, in a 10-team league, that is the easiest drop of all time. In a 12-team league, I don't think there's any need to hold on to Keldon Johnson. You may disagree with this. Smarter people than me might disagree with this. But I have been saying this from the beginning of the season, and I will continue to say it. Nothing he has done this year has changed my opinion on him. So yeah, get rid of him. Nikhil Alexander-Walker in a bench role, shit shooting. He's not as good as people believe him to be. I remember having arguments with people like years ago, like, oh man, he's, he's going to be like their starting point guard as a rookie. He's going to take over from Lonzo Ball. This guy's the future. Like, he's not a point guard. He's a shooting guard who doesn't shoot very well. I think he's undersized. I don't know. I, I just, I like him, but he's one of those guys that came in as a rookie and had some really big preseason games. Shout out to Kyle Kuzma. And people just overhype him ever since then. And I probably got sucked into that a little bit this year, like drafting him around maybe 100, maybe like in the 90s, just because I thought there was opportunity. He would start, the minutes would be up. Um, but he's been bad. See you later. Carmelo Anthony, and get rid of him. Bob Covington. You're always scared to drop Robert Covington. But what are we now? Seven weeks in? Is he even a top 150 player? The Blazers are terrible. He's 30, 31 years old. Are they like building around him? No. Move on. And the last guy, very much in the Keldon Johnson mold, is Rowan Barrett. Rowan Barrett is... How do I say this? Like, bad? I know Knicks fans will come at me, and they love him, and they think he's so good, but he is, at least for fantasy, like shit house. 205th ranked player this year. Much like Keldon again. Absolutely no steals, no blocks, low assists, doesn't take threes. His shooting has been disgusting. He'll have better nights for sure. But what's his upside? Maybe the 120th best player? It's just, he's just clogging a roster spot at this point. So see you later, Ron Barrett. Let's bang through some must roster players now. These are guys who I think are top 100 guys. It, account, it is points leagues and category leagues as well that I think if they're on your waiver wire, you need to make sure they're at it. And these are all guys that either on Yahoo or ESPN are rostered in 60% of leagues or fewer. Most likely it's on ESPN, but they might be available. Alec Burks. Gives me an opportunity to do this. Alec Berg. Um, yeah, easy. Add him. Like, he's a starting point guard. It might go sour at some point, but I don't give a shit. Like, you add him, and then you we deal with it later. LaMarcus Aldridge, he is. I, I don't think Nick Claxton is start taking this job away from him. If anything, Claxton comes in and just takes Paul Millsap's backup role away. Like Aldridge is pretty, pretty good uh, as that starting center. The old um, rabbit hunter, Alex Caruso. Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. 
I think he's a must roster. I know he's out with a hamstring, so let's see where that goes, but got to be rostered. Bob Portis, got to be rostered. Dan Gafford, got to be rostered. The Wild Thing, Jay Sean Tate, at least for now, got to be rostered. Hey, you know, over the last uh, week, he's the third ranked fantasy player. He's playing out of his mind. In large part, it is due to absences to Porter and to um, and to Green. And he's seen these gigantic spikes in usage. Shooting's gone through the roof. Minutes have gone up and defensive stats are just pouring out of his ass. This is all going to stop. It is all, oh, sorry, let's rephrase. This is all going to reduce. But he still has to be on a roster and then we can we can drop later on if things change. That's fine. Jalen Brunson, it's must roster. Jared Vanderbilt. There's someone called him the Vandalorian, which I don't mind. It's just, I don't think it's going to roll off my tongue. Um, there is definitely a, a nickname there for Jared. I just don't know what it is yet for me anyway. I'm, I'm working. And then, again, people, Josh is so biased, mate. The players you hate, the players you love. Just, mate, you just, you got to look at it neutrally. If there's ever an example of me not being biased is me telling you that you have to roster Dylan Brooks. I cannot stand watching this bloke play. He has the most outsized opinion of his ability and his coach thinks he's better than he is. He's shit house, all right? But you have to roster him because he's getting these minutes and he's taking every shot in the world and Ja Moran is out. He's got to be rostered. I don't think he's good. If I was running an NBA team, he would not be in my starting five. He'd play 15, 18 minutes off the bench, come in and, and be a pest and you know, play worse than Jordan Clarkson. Like That's who he is. But you've got to roster him. He's a must-roster player, and that's exactly what got a roster means, of course, because I know English very, very well. And if you want something that you know very well, and that is the deliciousness that is Built Bar, why don't you get them for Christmas? Boxes and boxes of Built Bar under the tree, just like Santa foretold. When Santa's thinking about what he's going to do with the elves, he sits down and he goes, oh, guys, just I need a break. I need a Built Bar because I need to fuel up for this busy season, just like you do if you need to brave the crowds at the mall. Built Bar is the product you need. It is low fat. It is low sugar. It is low carbs. It is high in protein. It is the best tasting protein bar ever. It tastes just like a candy bar, in fact. There are so many ways to enjoy Built Bar. As a breakfast bar, beautiful. After exercise, to get that energy back, lovely. As a dessert alternative, whoa, couldn't be any better. And to save money, wow. Locked15 is the code you use. You go to built.com. Grab yourself boxes of Built Bars. I know you want to do it because you are built different. So get yourself a box of Built Bars. In fact, don't get a box. Get a ton of boxes. Stuff them in everyone's stocking. Be the Christmas giver that you would like. Give the gifts that you would like to receive. Built.com, Locked 15, Built Bar. It is the best tasting protein bar ever. Guys, football season is almost done, is it? Yep, college football season's done, isn't it? Bowl season's coming up. The NBA, the NFL playoffs are moving on. The NBA season's rolling. And the number one spot for all your props, lines, and contests is BetOnline. So head to BetOnline, the new updated website. Use our code LOCKEDON and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Whether it's basketball or football or the NHL or boxing or UFC or right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers they have for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's look at some upside grabs now. I'm going to go with my man, the delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. The Rockets are now apparently more open to playing him alongside Christian Wood. I don't know why this is hard. Like this dude, from the moment he's set on the court, like is good. He needs to play 20 minutes a night. Now, I know Christian Wood's, Christian Woods playing at a really high level. It is hard to stash Shengun because of the fact they're running two, uh, one big most of the time. But if they do start to use these two guys together, you know, Wood might play 33. So there's 15 backup minutes for Shengun. So you got those. But if they, if they start combining them for six minutes a night, right, then Shengun at 21 minutes is a 12-team league player. At this point, he's a luxury stash. To see where this new proclamation of playing the two bigs together goes... And I don't think there's any problem with playing Wood and Shengun together because Wood can shoot and Shengun can pass. That opens the court way up. All right? It just opens everything up. So I think there is some value in him there. I also think he's teammate Armani Brooks. Now, I don't know what's going to happen long-term with Johnny Wall or Eric Gordon or even guys like Matthews. And that. Now, we in-depthly profiled Brooks earlier or late, uh, late last week about his value. He's a very, very high-volume three-point shooter. And that can have some value there. I think in Sacramento, Lou King's one to watch. At the moment, Terrence Davis has pushed ahead. But who knows if this team is going to blow up or not. I reckon they will. 
And King is a name to watch for later in the season. Cam Thomas in Brooklyn, he's getting a lot of minutes over Javon Carter. He's playing you know, equal amounts at times to Bruce Brown. He's not going to be afraid to take shots, but he's actually reined in some of that part of his game. And I think he looks pretty good out there. James Booknight, look, honestly, one of the worst. Look, he just, he's a lottery pick and he's done nothing. But with Ball and Rozier out, maybe he gets a chance. This is not so much an upside grad for labor, later in the season. It's for literally right now. Maybe they see him and he comes in and he goes, wow, look at that. Booknight did something good. I bet you even forgot about him. Remember when he was like, oh man, he's a top five player. He's going to go in the draft. And he got he slid, slid to 11 and has done nothing. But there is a chance here. So just watch him. Zeke Naji, a name I think needs mentioning. He went bananas yesterday for the uh, Nuggets. But remember, that was a blowout. And we had Jeff Green and Aaron Gordon play 25 minutes each. And Big Chungus played 27. So Naji played 33. And he looked great. Now, is there an argument for Naji to play over Jermichael Green? Yeah, really easily there is. Is there an argument to him, for him to play over Jeff Green? Well, I think if the season goes sideways for Denver, then yes. He's got a really good fantasy profile as a scoring, rebounding, shot-blocking, three-point shooting big man. He's what all of you Bol Bol fans want Bol Bol to be, but Bol Bol is not that. Bol Bol is bad. Zeke Naji can be good. Naji is absolutely someone to watch. And then in Memphis, Santi Aldama. Now, I know it's probably just because, say, Ja Morant's out at the moment and Kyle Anderson's been battling injuries, but Aldama is doing okay. He's just a name to watch in case there are moves for like a Brandon Clark, a Xavier Tillman, Stephen Adams. Trades go down. I don't. He's not starting, of course, because Jaron Jackson's there. But if Jaron gets hurt, I just watch Aldama. He's taken some really, really big strides lately. And then just some other names that we need to mention. Desmond Bain and Tyus Jones. I think these guys are pretty much must roster for the short term as well. Bain probably lasts as a must roster guy. He's been great. Um, Terrence Davis in Sacramento, two massive games in a row. He was literally out of the rotation earlier this season, and it has helped that Barnes, well, not helped. It's He's getting minutes because Barnes is out, but he's been pretty good there. And same with Chemezi Metsu, who blocked a ton of shots yesterday. I don't mind streaming them in for the short term, but I really have my doubts that it lasts. Dwight Howard, new Lakers starting center, probably more 14 to 16 team leagues. He's not playing 30 a night, but there's something there with him. Cam Johnson with Devin Booker out is worth looking at as a short-term point and three streamer. And then Killian Hayes is looking better. And I think the most important thing with Hayes is he's playing like 30 minutes a night. He's more of an assist and steals guy than anything else, but he's not a bad rebounder for a guard. And that role is what's helping him out. And the fact, I think he's improving at a pretty high level. He's still terrible, but he is improving. He's gone from worst in the NBA to maybe bottom 25%. And that's a huge jump. And he is improving and the minutes are coming up and he is looking a bit better. Guys, that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Hey, go and check my Twitter account. I'm going to have a poll up for which player we do I request elaboration on today. So check that out. And also, if you want to drop a Watfo for the recap show, drop it down below as well. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.